So, Jenny, uh, can I explain about the programme that we're doing? And this is what we call an informed consent procedure, which I've agreed to read out to all the young people I'm interviewing, OK? Mm. Um, this programme is about young people under 18 years of age, whose behaviour has got them into trouble and are housed here at uh, Acliff Young People Centre. And at Castington. The programme will focus on roughly six to ten such young people, and you're one of the young people we'd like to focus on. The programme will look at how each of the crimes committed by the young people has affected them and others around them. Anyone who has a television will be able to watch the programme, will be able to see and hear what you look like, OK? Mm. I'm not blotting you out. It's you. A couple of things for you to remember. If you don't understand any of the questions that I'm asking, then tell me. And if you don't want to talk about something, tell me as well, OK? Um, if at any point you tell us you no longer want to be in the programme, uh, we'll discuss this with you, and if you decide you no longer want to be in the programme, we'll only use what's already recorded, if you agree. Mm. And if you don't agree with it, end up, you'll never appear in it. It's up to you. Yeah. So you can all change your mind. Uh, now, I'd prefer you to, obviously, to stay with us, but it's up to you. Uh, the other thing is you'll tell me the truth when you talk to us, mm. I hope. We may also... I'm not saying we want to, but we may also want to interview your family and the people who are affected by your crime. But we don't know. Yeah. Really. You'd rather not. Fine. OK. So, do you understand what the programme's about? Yes, sir. And what your involvement in the programme is? Yeah. Will you take part in the programme? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any questions you want to ask me? No, sir. You don't have to call me sir. <laughs> no. I'm not an officer, OK? I'm no. making this film. You call me what you like, yeah? So you know why we're here? As Fending Group work, they're doing some filming today. Give people an idea of the kind of work young people do here, yeah? Make changes in their lives, that's all it's about today. There's a, there's a heck of a lot that we can get out of this group work, yeah? That's why we're here, that's why we're doing it. It's really important, yeah? Help to keep you safe and help to keep you out of trouble and help, hopefully help keep you out of prison. So, is your education important to you? Yeah, because you couldn't get a decent job. And could you lose your education by bunking off? Mm. Yeah. So, these negative consequences for bunking off school, pretty big, aren't they? How long do you think that, that's going to have an effect on your life if you're bunking off school? Of course they are. A long time, that's right. So, so Jenny, what, tell me about your life before this. I never used to get in trouble. <laughs> oh, I was still about 12 and then, when my mum ran off with um, some of my brothers, my younger brothers and my younger sisters with their boyfriend and left to Scotland and then we had to live with my dad and then I just saw my brothers in and out of prison so I just started getting in trouble and came in. Right. What, what did you actually do? Just used to go around hitting people for nothing when I was on, when I used to drink. Right. And it, it was it the drink that prompted this? No, I just I was upset because my mum left. So I just used to drink to get rid of my anger. Like people like self harm, I just find it easy going out battering people for it. As people find it easy just to cut cut themselves. So I just went out and hit people. Right. Literally strange strangers or people you knew or anybody. Anybody that walked past me, even if they just looked at me, then they just headbutt him or something. <laughs> really? Sounds quite a, like a, a, a high level of violence, yeah? So yeah. You're, you're pretty aggressive, yeah? Did you hurt people badly? Yeah. What did you do to them? Punch them, headbutt them, 
If they were standing on the floor, I'd stand on the red, kick him in the belly, anything. And when people were shouting or screaming, did that, that didn't stop you? No, it just made me go worse. Why did that make you go worse? Because of all the shouting in there. I thought, oh, just if people like you shout, oh, she's bleeding or something like that, I just to carry on, carry on. So the police come and stream into the back of the riot van. Right, I've got a red card, a CIF, with four different stories. I want oh. your side of the story. And somebody here is not telling the truth. Me, well, for a start, I didn't punch him on, he punched him in the head. Okay. And you know, and you know for a fact, I wouldn't tell lies. I'd hold my hands up and say, yeah, I did do it, yeah? What had happened was, when I was in art, I heard Jordan sing, happy birthday to me. So I thought it was birthday, do you know as you do? So I went, oh, is this your birthday? When I went to wash my hands to get these paste off my hands. And he goes, yeah, so give him a hug and a kiss, right? And I said, oh, I'll give you a bit, I'll buy you a birthday card. I went right away, but <laughs> you just say that to a little kid. And then he was standing the lesson, and he admit, yeah, I walked into the lesson. He goes, it's not really my birthday. So I went, oh, you little shit, just tapped him, just tapped him there. Do it exactly as you did. So I was up to him, he went, <laughs> Oh, you little shit, but I had it like that because he had all paint Are you all sure you were hands. like that? No, I just went like that because he had all paint all over my hands. And then he just started kicking and screaming oh. and everything like that. So I uh, started washing my hands and then Chantal came out and was going, oh, you little slag or something like that. So I was going for Chantal and she, and she said something. She she said something, so I called her a dyke. So she goes, yeah, your mum's a dyke. So I said, yeah, at least I've got a mum. So it all quieted down because I went back into the classroom. And she come back, started calling me again, and she didn't even get her care for it. So how did all this start? Me? You're walking into the classroom. Where should you have been? In my classroom. This would never have happened if you would have stayed where you were supposed to stay. Stayed in the room you were at and not get involved in other people's lessons, other people's arguments. We've been through this before. And although you're saying this is your side of the story, Unfortunately, this has backfired because it's now a CIF. And yeah. you know this all goes down in your file, yeah, in your records, and comes up at your meetings. Explain to us what the system is here. Well, you get a blue card for being good and doing your work. You get a, cr you get a cross for like, not doing no work or, like, if you say fuck off or something. And then you get a yellow card for swearing and that, which I do most of the time. And you get a red card for being abusive to staff, not doing any work. If you get two yellow cards or three yellow cards, you get a red. Right. So, how are you doing? Uh, Not that well, but all right. I've had seven red cards. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, you're too late to go out of school. Tomorrow morning, get up. Do the beautiful face that you always do, but can you have the beautiful mouth and actions, please, tomorrow? <laughs> and come back into school, the Jenny that we love, not the Jenny that we hate. And I'm going to start saying to you, snakes and ladders. I don't want to see the snake. Get out of that snake pit, climb a ladder. It's harder than, it. it's harder than what you can say. Struggle. Everything in life's a struggle. Last time, last time a teach, teacher said um, something about my mum and I chucked a chair at her. <laughs> but I didn't mean to, though, I just was angry, so I ended up chucking a chair at her. Then I got, I think it was an extraction. Right. I had to sit outside Mr Upper's office. Yeah. So you were excluded from your first school because this was not tolerated, right? Intolerable behaviour. Yeah, because he used to be, like, get excluded for like two weeks, coming back for a day, and then I get excluded again. Yeah. And then he just said, I'm explaining you, I can't be doing with you. Right. And then what happened? Then I was out of school for about six months. Just was waking up, used to come in about five o'clock in the morning, drunk or something, drugged up, <laughs> stay asleep till about six o'clock, go back out and do the same thing again. He's, um, uh, I fucking... Why are you looking at me like that, Papa? There. It's just admiring the thing. Where? Have you missed me? 
I want to keep him on the note. Hey. Hmm. Hey, what's on now? Carl, have you missed me? Moon swings. Yeah. Like a hole in the head. Right. Get a free long shot, turn prop ones, ecstasy. Ah, uh, well, this is myself. Long shot, short. Ah, just Bernie. bet. Bernie, come out to play. I'm dipping it. Christ almighty woman. Do you ever feel sorry for what you did? After you did it? No. That's all. Mate used to do dead, but I didn't. I just used to laugh. So look up for the first got locked up and then it hit me. And then since it's been a, in a, or when I was in my remand, I didn't want to go. So I knew for a fact I'd get back in trouble. Then he ended up here. So what do you think your future is? If you had your dreams in your way, what would you like to do? Do childcare, so I can help, like, children go through what I've been through in life and understand, like, I, it'd be better for me to understand them because I've been through it and that. Or I'd be a hair and beauty, hair and beauty, something. Because I like playing with people's hair. So you'd like to be a, a beautician? Uh... Oh, social services. So you want to help other people? Yeah, because if like, pe like kids going through the same things that I've been through, I can relate to them because I've been through it before, I've like, been inside and all that. Mm -hmm. So it'd be easy for me to understand it. Like social services now, I often don't even have a bloody clear what you're going on, but you sit there and you try to talk to them. It just goes in one ear and out the other. And then if like someone sat there that's been through what you've been through, it's easy for them to understand them where you're mm -hmm. coming from and your background and that. I can understand that. I can understand that. But most of the social services are mongs. What do you think of grown-ups generally, adults? Don't trust them. Just don't trust them. Who do you trust? Well, I'm just starting to get. I'm just starting to trust Rachel and me, other key worker. Um, that's it. Don't trust my dad. Don't trust my ma. Don't trust my granddad or anyone. Right, Jennifer. I rang you at worker today. And I spoke about your concerns about leaving, how you said you really don't want to leave, you'd rather stay here. And unfortunately, obviously, it's not an option, otherwise everybody would be here they were 90, wouldn't they? Um, I've told them you really, really are concerned about getting back out and getting in trouble. You feel really anxious about, because you don't know what's happening to you and you need plenty of support to keep you on the right track. I even said to him, I'm quite anxious that because you want to stay here where you're safe and happy, you might re-offend to get back and that's a real concern of mine because sometimes people do that to get back into care, yeah? So he's promised me that by your next meeting he's going to have found a placement for you, foster care hopefully. He asked me if they thought there was anything else that was suitable for you and I said no, I don't think children's homes really appropriate for you now. But you need a family, yeah? You want a family around yeah, you? Yeah, I want a family. You want people to be there for you? Yeah, but half of them are locked up. Yeah, but when you leave, later this year, you know, what would be the best thing for you? To be in foster care. Yeah, a new family. Yeah, but with, like, no other kids there because I get too frustrated when other kids are there. Like, I was in, when I got out last time, I was in a foster placement then, but my stupid old job work, I thought he'd put me in a children's home and I just went a bit wrong. So you wouldn't want to go to a children's home? No. no. Here, can any of you play chess? I'm trying to see you now. Nah, cos you always beat me. Come on, then. Don't need to wash, you just watch. You don't need to wash, you know, you just watch. Just watch. So I didn't know whether to check them. Cos when that is in that, that was there, I could check. See? You might be locked up, but we're not thick. <laughs>Do you remember when we first came and we used to chat about aggression and how you thought when you were younger it was normal, didn't you? We yeah. talked about all the, all the anger and all the aggression in your family and you grew up thinking it was normal to use your fist to solve problems. Do you remember mm. that? 
And after a while, you started to realise that it wasn't normal, didn't you? And that staff don't go around doing it. Adults in the street don't go doing it. You know, you wouldn't go downtown now and, and see people in shops punching each other because they were trying to solve a problem, with you? And you actually know now, don't you? It's not normal. <laughs> but even that red card last week was rescinded because it wasn't accurate, because two of the young people were kind of elaborating on the truth, shall we say. So that red card was taken away, wasn't it? So you actually haven't had a red card for two weeks, two now. weeks now, which is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, yeah, they even gave a yellow card last week. I know. Which means not only are the house staff coming to me with your praises, but so are the education staff. Everybody's singing your praises because this angry young woman's turning into a, a very capable, very well-adjusted young woman who's actually thinking before she acts. <laughs> I know, yeah, you still got comes with my prank on that, my bloody cough. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel any more confident about going out because you were really, really reluctant to leave? Do you feel any better about that or not? No, I still want to stay. I don't want to leave. Well, hopefully with a bit of mobility and you build that up, if you keep being good, you'll build that up and we'll get you used to going out again. You might feel more confident more in society. I understand how you feel, though, Jennifer. I mean, it's a hard thing for you to go out when you're surrounded by people who you've got in trouble with in the past, yeah? I know it's hard, but we're going to have to go out and look at building up new friendships as well. Or sticking with the people you knew before, you're not going to get you in trouble. I, can't, I cannot sit here and say, one well, one camera, oh, when I get out, I'm not going to get lots of backup because I can't, because as soon as I get out there, I don't know what I could do. I could go out, beg or someone else and chat someone around the head with a bloody cash at all. But what's going to stop you doing that? I don't know, just being in a proper family. Where, like, not seeing my brothers get locked up all the time and my dad and that. And to have more contact with my mum, but it won't happen, so... Does that upset you? I'm not having contact with my mum. I've not seen her for it. I've seen her once in three years. That's it. But does that upset you? It used to. But now, it doesn't bother me. I just think if she wants me, she'll either phone me or come and get me. But if she doesn't, at the end of the day, it's her loss, not mine. These are all negative consequences of, of what? Bad behaviour, really, isn't it? That's what it comes down to, yeah? Bunking off school, right, come on then. Tell us about negative consequences of bunking off school. Okay, There's got to be some, haven't there? Expelled. Expelled, right, yes. Detention. Detention. Uh, grounded. Grounded. Which is by mum and dad, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. When did you begin absconding from school? What age were you? Twelve. I'm not in primary school, man. So from twelve on, when you went to your comprehensive, yeah? Mm hmm You started absconding? Yep. What was your favourite car? Mondeo's. <coughs> that was the car you liked to steal most? Mm-hmm. How many Mondeos did you steal? Well, when I got arrested yesterday, there was 50 Mondeos that I had to be interviewed about. 50? Yep. You stole 50 Mondeos? I had stole 50, but there's been 50 stolen. Right. All over Leeds? Yep. What, what was it about the Mondeo you liked so much? They were fast, easy to drive, and easy to take. Don't push too hard, man. Let me see you do the work, yeah? That's it, nice and even, all the way across. Nice to be working with cars again. Yeah. Instead of taking them and driving away with them, here you are actually working on them. Big difference? Mm-hmm. Did you belong to a gang? Not a gang. I didn't belong to them. I was just part of it. What was it about the gang that you liked, though? Because we'd all meet up in a fin. I wanted them. Yeah. But was it important the gang had a reputation? Yeah. What reputation did you have? The driver. You were known as the driver? Yep. So explain to me, all these people you're coming across, care workers, social workers, court staff, why do they have so little effect on you? That's what interests me. Well, because I wasn't bothered. You didn't care? Yep. 
Why didn't you care? I don't know, because it's, I, don't know. I like doing it, pinching cars and everything. What is it that makes you want to break the law in this way, take somebody else's car? So I just want to be known and everything. I don't want to be known by people and everything. I don't know why though. So it's for attention, is it? Mm hmm. Oh, there's Niall. He's a, you know, he's a terrorway. He's a thief. He's. Look at him. Is that is that is that it? No, I don't want to be known by. <coughs> oh, it's hard to explain. Try. I want to be known by people, not like stupid people. If you know what I mean. It's hard to explain. You mentioned you were on tablets or something. Dexedrine, I was on. I used on Dexedrine. And what's that? It's for ADHD. Which means? Attention deficit something disorder. What does that mean? If I don't take my tablets, I'd go all crazy and everything. Like, I'd just, if the person was there and pinching a car, I'd take it in front of them. Okay, now, um, for the past few weeks we've been looking at your crime, yeah, and doing some work on it. And in this session we're going to do work on victims. All right? Okay. So we're going to look at your index offence, yeah, and we're going to look at your victim. How seriously injured was he? A lot. Yeah, can you go through? Because he couldn't eat, he had to eat full pipes and everything. That's right. What else? And couldn't piss properly. All right. Couldn't it. go to the toilet, could yeah. he? What, what was that from? From where we kicked him, I think. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> mm -hmm. What else was wrong with him? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Was it on it? No, what happened to his jaw? Oh, fractured, fractured, wasn't it? Yeah, he had a fractured jaw. And he actually, he had um, screws put into his jaw and his chin and the doctor told him that he, he'll never have the screws taken out of his chin. He'll always have to have them in for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. So that's quite serious because that's really long term, isn't it? Yep. Um, how much do you think he felt threatened by the crime? A lot. Yeah, scared. And what about now? Think he would be long term? Probably. Because he's actually said that he feels that it was a racist attack, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that he would be now? No, because I think he knows now that we've been locked up and everything. Right. What's your reaction to having to tell her that, or for having to listen to that? How do I feel about yeah. it? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't really thought about how I feel about it. Because. Ever since I got arrested for it and it all, oh, it's only started like hitting me since I was on the trial and everything, because I had a trial for it. So. And then, then, then I couldn't sleep and all, so I was thinking about it. You're not losing any sleep over it? I was then, right. when I was on the trial, but now, right. since I've been sentenced, yeah. not have I been okay, just thinking about when you get out and everything. Yeah. But she brings it all up again. She went through the details. She made you think about him as a victim. She made you think about your victim. <laughs> Was that uncomfortable for you? No. So that's not the first time I've ever like, discussed it. Right. So the first time I discussed it was a bit hard because I'd never thought about it till then. Right. So but then the last little session to the AWO wasn't that bad. No. What? Do you think, what's she trying to do with that interview? What's she trying to make you understand? Or... Think about how he felt and how he's feeling now since it happened. Yeah. And are you? Does it make you do that? No. Because I don't try to think about it. You know. But if you don't think about it, does that mean you could do it again? No, I'll never do it again. You feel confident about that? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.
So Darren, what's going to happen today? Yeah. Going to get released in about an hour's time. Right. Yeah. So how long have you been here? About nine, ten months. Nine, ten months. This is the longest time you've done in, mm -hmm. a, in a prison, yes? Mm -hmm. I did prison. in one sentence. In one sentence. Do you think of this place as a prison or as a... As a what, what Practically from place? home to home. Yeah. What did you do? What sort of things have you been doing? Pinch cars, robberies, burglaries, loads of things like that. You started at 12? Very bad. Yeah. And, and what sort of drew you to this? Why, why did it happen, do you think? It's just not us to do, just get a buzz off it, light in it. When you say you like the buzz of it, what, what does that mean? Like the adrenaline rush. When, it's, when like you... Excitement? Up, not, like getting other people's stuff and that. So when you first did it, what was it, a car or a house or somebody's bag, what? A house. Just gone walking through other people's sitting rooms and that when I'm not in. What did that feel like? Kind of good to me, like. Being in somebody else's house? Mm-hmm. Were you afraid? No, nah, because I knew they weren't in. You, you, you'd suss that out? Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter that you... what it's like for the people in the house? No, because they're never in when we did. When, when they come back, them just phone the coppers and we'll get caught for it, we'll go to jail for it and pay them a hefty fine. So then we're getting the insurance back on the house and getting our fine money off us. So we're getting more. I see, that justifies what you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. In we, your, your head. We're still, we still paying them back. I've got, got fines, Lo loads of money fines. So where do you get the money to pay the fine? I didn't pay me fine, the mum does. Your mum pays all the fines. Is that fair on your mum? No, it's not fair, but she pays them. What happens if she didn't pay? She'd get the call for it. Because with me only being 16, she's the like the elder. She's called Pia, like the next of kin. Does it ever worry you, the pressure you put on your mum? My worry is this sometimes, but... Sorry, man. What happens if she got very upset and said, you mustn't do this anymore, you really mustn't do it anymore, I can't cope? She says it before, but still ended up doing it. So even if your mother got very upset, it wouldn't worry you? My worry is this, but do I still do it. What about your dad? Didn't really get on with him. So, but I still taught at him and that. It, it just... I haven't got the same frame of mind. But do they try and tell you? I they tell us every single day. It's just bands and money, you know, the other. Have you talked to various people, like psychologists, social workers, case workers, prison staff? You talked to all these people? I, I didn't like talking to them because they just batted me head, man. That's why <coughs> I never ended up talking to them. When you say batter your head, what do you mean? They just, every, every one of them just talk about the same stuff over and over again. Just does me head in. A bit like what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> did you attend school or did you abscond most of the time? I abscond. Then I just start getting kicked out for daft things, like tossing fireworks in the class and that. It's just uh, kick us out. What did you do when you were excluded? That, that probably is when I started doing loads of criminal stuff. Like, all that time by myself and that. It's just... You still can commit crime. So if you hadn't been excluded, you might have committed less crime? Probably, I. If I had a light school more, I wouldn't... would never... probably never have done it. Mm. Nothing about education attracts you at all? 
done most of education in there, so not daft and out now now what most things are. What have you done in here then? What what in education wise? Catering courses, art and design courses, computer courses, loads of courses like that. And? Got certificates and that for them, all that's about it. So you've done quite well? Mm-hmm. So why not use those to you know get yourself a job? I'm only 16, man. I want to live my life first. I didn't want a job till I'm older. Right. Is boredom a big problem for you? What about that? Yeah. No, didn't go. Sometimes get bored, sometimes dinner. Most of the time, we're just party animals. <laughs> you got a girlfriend on the arm? Nah, just one night stands for me. You like to have a. Permanent girlfriend? No. Nah, all I want is your money, man. And you've worked hard for your money, right? Spent lots of time in jail for my money. I suppose, I suppose that's what's interesting is the fact that you're prepared to do this, sacrifice your freedom for these moments. And that's worth it? That's worth being a criminal for? No, it's not worth it, but it's what happens, you know. That's that's what my life's like. It, the crime, come in jail, get out, stop out for a bit, the crime, come back in, that's, that's what it's always been like. But you could stop it? Might if I wanted to. So the big question for you is, when you're out in the street and there's a car, or there's a house, or there's something you want, what are you going to do? Probably his neck the car, burglar house and rob the person. Yes. Uh, whilst you're under supervision, you must keep in touch with your supervising officer in accordance with any reasonable instructions that you may from time to time be given. Must be of good behaviour, not commit any further offences, and not take any action which would jeopardise the objectives of your supervision. Don't forget, don't come back. This is fantastic, you'll enjoy this bit. Wait, you'll, you'll have seen these forms before, no doubt. Two times. Okay. S straight, straightforward, simple questions. I just want to see if you've got any problems on initial interview or anything like that, any medical problems, any alcohol or drug problems, okay? Yeah. You know what happens next, you go through the back, you see the officers, they'll explain what they're doing. Right. Then you'll see your nurse. Any concerns you've got with medical care, anything like that, she can deal with that. Right. Okay, then. Previous convictions, tell me about your previous convictions. What, off, off when? All my life? Okay. Yes, anything that's happened to you in the past that you've been in trouble for? Burglary, twerk, uh, assault, criminal damage, theft. Okay, robbery. that's fine. Have you ever been involved in a racist or homophobic crime? No. It's basically, have you ever assaulted any blacks or gays oh, or anything like that? I have assaulted like black people in, in that before. How do you mean you've assaulted black like, people? I've had fights with black people, not just because of the colour, no, it's just I've had fights with them, I've had fights with white people. So it just so happens that the, uh, 
the were black and you, you ended up fighting. There was nothing racist about it. Okay, then, so. We need a pin number as well. Win. See? Pad doesn't want to be messed out. After I got out, bought in the shop, bought the kind of pop, and the woman left a tin open, so I snatched them. <laughs> Free now! Then we snatched a couple of bottles, about 50 bottles or something from the shop. <laughs> Put a bet on you, only for you to month. <laughs> Two weeks. Go on, I'm sure then! Beer, you. That? Beer, you. I could have got beer today. Just wanted to come back. <laughs> no, I want to be out for Christmas. And if I if I'd stopped out any longer, I wouldn't have been out. So Darren, we phoned you two weeks ago and you're back. <laughs> but you predicted in a way, wasn't it? Wasn't it? It's just got caught. <laughs> what was it? There. And it was just the Queen's head was looking at it when I took the money, so it's looking at it, so I thought, just coming with me. <laughs> And who did you see? Did you see your friends? What did you do in those two weeks besides that? Just got drunk and that was it. The only time I was drunk, I was um, gone home in bed. Did you see a member of the youth offending team? Uh, I've seen them all the time. And what did they say to you? Not much. Just Babylon. You weren't going to listen to them. No. You're determined to go straight back, yeah? No, I didn't want to come back. It's just... I'm back. Do you feel at home? Do you feel... No. Just want to edit and clean this pad, because whoever was in it last time must have been a trump. It stinks. Cleaning up now. Right. Just gonna get a need to get a green scrubby pad in there. Bite the sides down. How do your mother feel about this? Ah, oh, now she's wounded. Now I've come back. Especially this early now. Anyway. Is this the shortest time you've been out? No. Nah. Been out two weeks before. And this time it's only longer because it's two weeks and three days. So I've achieved an extra three days.
So these are only long sentence people here, yeah? Yeah, like lifers and six years. Like I got six years, five months, 19 days. Yeah. Prison. Yeah. So, no. So tell me, Steve, why are you here? Because I robbed three lads at a bus stop with a knife and uh, took the phone off them and I nearly stabbed one of them. Well, I went to stab him. I think I stabbed him or something and then ran off and then I got caught by the police, by a dog van. And then they arrested me. I can't hear myself in. Who's that? Is that somebody doesn't want to do the What? I see. Somebody doesn't want us to film you, right? Why is he doing that, do you think? Because he wants to wind me up. Being a prick. So, has he wound you up? Not banging on the wall. When I've got my TV on, when he bangs on my wall and I can't hear it, yeah, he winds me up. Right. I hear myself, man. God. It's a stress head. He's pretty angry, isn't he? He's angry all the time. Yeah, he'll do that tonight as well. Really? Yeah. He does it all the time. So it can be sometimes quite a tense thing being here, yeah? Yeah. All his unit. Yeah. When did you begin, you know, Ten. committing crime? Ten, Ten years old, my first street robbery. Yeah. I was doing, before that, I was doing, like, shoplifting, you know. Got caught for a few shoplifting, got cautions. And then I started, I did this robbery. These two girls and this lad, I robbed them. Threw stones at them. Took some money off them. And I got arrested. And then ever since then, I got around with the wrong crowd. All my mates. Doing crime, robberies, burglaries, robbing cars, doing all sorts, smoking drugs, taking pills, taking pills, doing all all sorts. Was there any moment where you felt you could stop? You went from one, from what you told me, from one crime to another, yeah? yeah. All the time. Mm. And you were, what, 12, 13, you could do like. Seven seven street robberies a day, isn't it? Something like that. How much you were doing? Yeah. Running off. Three month. I ran off for three month once. No, but I was all over the news and everything. My, my name, my picture. Because they were worried about me. Where did you go for these three months? Everywhere. My mates' houses. Just sitting in houses, smoking me. Eating tea, with men having tea at their houses. They're giving me money and all that. I'm robbing people to get money, to get drugs. It's just mad. Yeah. I'm just out of control and them. And then I had the like, I went in the children's home. Then I had the my my dad came one morning and told me my little brother died. So and then I just went. I couldn't cope with that and I just started doing all this stuff. <coughs> just sit down and think. How can, how can it be that my brother's dead? And, and that's when I thought, fuck, fuck all this. I'm just gonna do what I want. And, do, and fuck, the, fuck the like law and all that. And just take it out on them, take my pain out on other people what don't deserve it, what I did. And that's, that, that's how I could let my anger out on other people and rob other people and blame them for everything. I went to a skier unit when I did another cry. Um, street robbery again. I went to a skier unit. And then I went from there to a gardening unit. It's like a, an hospital where I can help you. You know, cope with things and all that. Because I, I was hearing voices and all that. So, took me, took me to there. And then they said there was nothing wrong with me. And then from there I went to court. And then I went to Inley, and then I, ever since then I've been out, out of jail. Just been in jail for like ages. What do you think the worst thing about being in prison? Not thinking it. Not having your freedom. Not doing what you want. 
not not to, well, not taking drugs and all that, because I love my drugs in it. I love drinking. It's the life what teenagers should grow up like, I think. Go raves. Listen to tunes in your bedroom, chill out with your mates, man. Taking drugs, smoking and all that. Everything. Mm. Can't do that here. No. Can't do that at all. Sitting in the same routine every single day. Education, come back to your pad. Go out for your tea. Go out, go out for association, come back in. Get your hot water, banged up, watch your TV. Same thing, wake up, get your breakfast, do every, every single thing the same day. Go to education. I mean, it's good. I think I, I'm used to it now because you know I've been in a long time. I'm used to the routine, so I don't get bored of it no more. But I used to get bored the same routine. Would you describe yourself as a criminal? With like 36 offences, you know, being charged 36 times. Yeah. Hmm? That's what you are. Hmm. A criminal. I'm not going to lie. That's very honest of you. <laughs> but are you going to be, continue to be a criminal? No. Why not? Stop. Get out. Start looking after my family. My mum and all that. And uh, such a thing, such a... No. And that. And just try and settle down. Do you think he can? Get a job, yeah. So yeah. I could settle down. But the odds are against you. Most, most. I could be tempted one. Under? I could be tempted one day. Everyone's tempted, and I could be tempted one day to do something bad and get like a life sentence, something serious. If my temper snapped, which I, it does snap, I can snap, and uh, I could do something daft one day and get arrested and get life. Be in jail for the rest of my life. You think that's a possibility? If if my anger don't calm down and stop being angry. When I get angry, I see blood. Yeah, I close my eyes and I see just anger in it. It's mad anger, like a blow. My fuse just goes. Hmm. What about your victims? Do you ever think about them? Sometimes. I would like to say sorry. Because it weren't a nice thing to go through, because it wouldn't be a nice thing for me to go through if I was getting robbed. But I've never gone through it, being robbed. So I won't know. So I won't know how it feels. How scared you were. Must have been. With me with a knife, ten inch knife. Threatening me with it. Must have been scared. So Robert, um, can you tell us what happened, why you're here? Um, one night, I'd been out to a nightclub and we met um, a lad there. There were about six of us who met a lad and we went to an house, um, one of my friend's house, and um, we started um, listening to music and that and made a couple of um, pot noodles. And the lad who we took up there, the f first time we met him, he knocked over one of the pot noodles. We asked him to clean it up. He, he will not clean it up. When he did start cleaning it up, he wasn't doing it fast enough. 
So we started hitting him. And then we started spraying him with aerosol can and lighting the fumes. And then my um, my friend asked me to go and get a petrol can from the car that we'd stolen early that night. So who decided to deal with it? Was it you? Everyone was talking about stuff and then ended up with getting the petrol. Did you get the petrol? No, Robert got the petrol. Passed it to me and I poured it off him. Yeah. And then? Got a light around, lit it and put his hand up. And this went on fire. So you actually set part of it? It was you who did that? Yeah. Yeah? And then the lad ran into a window while they were on fire. And I went back inside the house. My friend came running back inside the house and said that he was dead. I looked out and he was still running around. So what did you think when you watched him running around the garden? I was scared that he was going to die. People weren't laughing. Shouting. It was at the start, and then I realised that you could actually die from it. And that's when it started getting serious. Yeah. Went inside to get a blanket, and they'd all locked the door. You went inside to get a blanket? Yeah. Well, why did you do that? To put him out. Why not just let him burn to death? Yeah, it was what, me what meant to happen, was it? So you realised that it was dangerous, yeah? Mm. Was he literally all over him, the flames? Or? Yeah, from about his chest up. Right. Why did your friend attempt to douse the flames and not you? I don't know. I mean, did you want to help the boy? I wanted to help him. But um, I think I went too much shock from what was going on. Yeah. So you went and got the blanket? Mm. Yeah. And then? Threw that over his head. And just patting it down. And just went out. So you probably saved his life then? Yeah, but I was the one that put it in danger anyway. Yeah. What was the... What were the circumstances as to why it happened, do you think? I mean, what is your explanation now in your own head as to what drew you to this, what, how this came about? Um, I just think it started off as a bit of fun and it got out of hand. Bit of fun? Yeah. Doesn't sound like much fun to me. I think it led to it from when we were spraying him with the aerosol, because a couple of us were pilled up, and um, the fascination with the fire, I think that's what led it to him being set on fire. What pills were you on then? Ecstasy. Right. How many ecstasy tablets had you taken that night? About three or four. Right. So you were pretty high? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So what, did, what sentence did you get? Got life with five years, but I got eight months off for a man. So it's four years, four months. You mean you got a life sentence? Yeah. But you've got to serve four and a half years? Yeah. Right. How do you think of that, that sentence? Got to get on with that, yeah. But what, what does it mean, life, for you? What, if you're going to serve four, four and a half years, what does the rest of it mean? Life. Getting a life sentence. Just means that you work it out unless you behave and license for the rest of your life. And, and what does being on license for the rest of your life mean? Means that I'll probably be straight back in. If? When the police are not coming out stitching you up, get sent straight back to jail. That's assuming that they, they will do that. 
I've done before, do it again. So how do you feel about the future then? Do I think about it? No? No. Many people would say you're very lucky to just get me out in two years. Mm. You could kill the boy and you should be in longer. You should have a life sentence as well. How do you react to that? I'm just lucky it, it, it didn't die. Yeah. He could easily have died though, couldn't he? Yeah. yeah. He was on um, the last plot machine for a few weeks. He was? Mm. Yeah. Was there a moment during that, that night or during that during the actual event itself, where you, you somehow could have stopped? I don't know. Just going with the flow of what happened. I mean, when you think about it as a sequence of events, there wasn't a moment where you could have said, oh, come on, come on, stop it, stop it, you know, it's going too far. Mm. Like threatening him rather than do it, but you actually did it. Mm. And that was really all of you Wanting to do it. Yeah. You know? So what are the chances of you reoffending, you think? Why shouldn't you do it again? Because after after this sentence, as I said, I was married for nearly four years or five years. And that's long enough. That that would be like a quarter out of my life. And I just wanna live my life. I don't wanna keep getting in trouble. I couldn't believe that my own, own son that I tried to bring up on my own would turn out like this. But hopefully now, he's spent a few years in prison now that everything will change and he'll go back to the normal Robert that he used to be. It seemed all right, until he went into children's home. Is that true, Robin? Yeah. It's gotten worse over the years. Moving from place to place and being away from my mum. Did you miss mum? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I did have these mental health problems. But I felt awful being split up from my son. I felt really bad about having split up from him. When I seen him at weekends and hardly getting contact with him and things like that. And every time I did want to get in contact with him and found out he'd done something wrong and ended up in court. Ended up getting fines to ended up spending a few months in young offenders to doing the biggest crime that he's done. But when he ended up in court and I went to went to the court and I stood in the dock with him. Seven years, couldn't believe it. Just sat down and, and cried. But the other one got life, and I'm glad. How do you want to leave this place in two years time? What sort of person are you going to be? Mm -hmm. Do you know who you are? Yeah, of course I know who I am. But... but you don't know who you are? You don't know why you did the crime? Mm -hmm. Do you? Don't know why I did it. No know why I'm so. But you know, you're living with the consequences. You know, it shaped your whole life, what you did. Yeah. Surely you owe it to yourself to find out why you did it. Yeah. Try and work it through, yeah? Yeah. Or do you think it's a waste of time? Just get on with your sentence and get out? No, 
Do I, sorry, I don't see anything could happen again. these questions is that can we learn from what you did why someone can do what you did is it possible to learn well, we're not. I mean, if you could do it then could you do it again Back. Say you later, sir. Really, are you?